G'day, my name is Chris Mouflard and I'm a project engineer at Vigo Software. Welcome to the Production Controlling Level 1. What is production control? In this vignette we aim to answer what is production control and why it is important. And we'll also go through an example. So what is production control? Production control is tracking in-field production of scheduled tasks. We can then produce production controls to find solution to production deviations. Essentially there's four parts of information that would feed a forecast. We have the baseline data, the current data, the progress, and the ultimate forecast trended based on this information. The forecast can be adjusted using control actions. We're going to learn a lot more about those in this level of vignettes and certainly in the upcoming slides. The concept of production control is not a novel one. It started back in 1931 during the construction of the Empire State Building. On the Empire State Building, it was, production was treated like an assembly line. Work was continuously aligned to be synchronized. The emphasis on controlling the work included counting actual quantities by location, ensuring that the crews were in the correct locations, managing the production and the resource leveling and logistics, which overall reduced the risk of cascading delays and allowed the Empire State Building to be completed in 18 months from design to client handover. An interesting quote that comes from the Starrett brothers was that contrary to popular conception, the principal function of the general contractor is not to erect steel, brick or concrete, but to provide a skillful centralized management for coordinating the various trades, timing their installations and synchronizing their work according to the predetermined plan. This is a production control chart. Ultimately, you will be using this to distribute to subcontractors and superintendents to track work as it is progressing through the project. We read this starting with the left-hand column, which indicates the different project areas or locations. Along the bottom column is the different scheduled activities. We would start by marking certain activities complete, which is indicated with a green box. We would include the actualized start, finish, or percentage complete, or even material amount complete, into each box. We can then track based off the current date and what is planned to start, what tasks are behind but have started, or which are overall late. This information will then feed the flow line forecast. Based on the actualized data and the report date, we can start to trend in the future. What we are seeing in this forecasted delay that the gray line of framing has continued slightly late and more or less required production rate to complete on time. However, the drywalling task is being completed slower than planned. And as we can see, it is impacting the forecast and it is impacting the commencement of continuous work for the tiling and priming and sealing tasks. Our next step is to understand how we can modify the resources. We do this using the control plan. The control plan is our ability to adjust crew sizes to determine whether these will have an impact on the ultimate completion of a task. In this example, we're looking at the drywalling task, which has a resource number of one. If we alter this resource number from one to two, we will now be able to see the impact on the forecast. By doubling the resources, we may be able to mitigate any potential future delays to the project. This is our proactive ability to understand the effects of production and resource demand on a given project. In this vignette, you've learned that production controlling is an important part into ensuring your plan is successful. We've also learned that this practice has been proven since the Empire State Building. And we know that quantities by location and actualized dates allows Vico Schedule Planner to tend trend future schedule behavior so we can be proactive with responding to potential alarms.